But I think until Justin Bieber actually initially comes out, we should respect that space for him. I agree. Because as someone who's definitely felt what it's like to be a survivor of male essay, mm -hmm. there's a different layer that comes with it. There's a different layer of shame that comes with being a male survivor of essay. And if you're not ready to come out, which even in my situation, I was kind of forced out. Like I didn't mm, even really want to talk I'm about sorry. my situation, but it ended up kind of happening in the way that it did. And I'm glad in the long run that it did because we got some laws changed, mm -hmm. but still I wasn't fully ready for that to come out. Right. And I wish I had a little bit more time. And I think that we should give Justin some grace in that mm -hmm. space and not make these speculative videos until he's ready to come out if it did happen to him. So, you know, leave Justin Bieber alone for real, like leave him alone. Uh, you don't know what happened. We can speculate all darn day, but I think if he has been through what he's been through and he survived it and yeah. he's still got a beautiful voice and still like he protects Billie Eilish, like there's yeah. a whole layer to him, but I just think that it's important for us to send that message because you could be destroying his mental health further and we don't want to push him down a road that he doesn't need to be on. Yeah, you know? I agree. That's a wonderful message and that's a good segue into what's next. I'm <laughs> excited about this. Let's talk about the presidential debate <laughs> with Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Oh my God. Can we, um, Solomon, can you get Check. that balloon popping ad up when you get a chance and let me know when Oh, Shane ready? came really prepared. Oh, I came oh. very prepared because... It's the Kamala Harris balloon popping ad that just came out. Now, we have to acknowledge Kamala's HQ, who has taken over the social media. Listen, I am actually proud of the Democrats. I am so proud of them actually understanding that we can't create this like softball pitches anymore because yeah. we're actually truly losing our rights. And yes. We can't sit here and debate Nazis and somehow like make the situation that somehow it equates to each other to equal rights and making this casual conversations out of very serious, serious things. So what do you think yeah. about all this? I have a lot to say. First of all, Kamala Harris is my birthday twin. We have the same birthday, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to yes. make that very clear. My dad has the same birthday as President Obama. So oh, royalty in there. the family. OK. And my mom has the same birthday as Marsha P. Johnson. Damn. Yeah. I don't think Damn. I ever told you that. No, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Here's the thing. I have a lot to say about this. Um, you know, I want to talk about I'm going to talk about what happened, what we saw on television, and then I'm going to talk about the trans experience around it because I have a lot to say about that too. Now, I watched that debate. I sat there, I watched it twice actually. I think Kamala Harris did a wonderful job. I think Donald Trump could not take her, could not handle her. I thought the funniest thing that he said was, "They're eating the pets." They're coming into this country. Biden and Kamala are letting them come in. They're eating the dogs. They're eating Did you the, hear the pets. TikTok sound that somebody remixed it and be like, they're eating I the pets. I saw that. They're I listened to it. Dogs. Oh my God. It was so funny. But the thing is, they were um, he was referring to Haitians. Yes. Um, Legal I, Haitians, citizens, Americans. Mm -hmm. Let's actually be right. American citizens. Yes. That's who he's referring to. Yeah. 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 And I think Kamala brought up like a lot of things. She talked about the things that Donald Trump didn't get did not get passed. She talked about his criminal record. Let's be clear. He has 34 felony convictions. With assaults and, attached to that. Exactly. And this is no disrespect to anybody who is a convicted felon who has been re rehabilitated. I want to make that very clear because I think sometimes, you know, when we talk about Donald Trump's convictions or whatnot, yeah. it's almost like we're throwing a jab at people who have been convicted felons. You know what I mean? They've done their crime. They've done their time. And they're out being better people. I think sometimes for them, it feels like a jab yeah. at them when we talk about that. And so that's why I always want to be a little bit more distinguished when I say we're not talking about rehabilitated like people who have experienced that. People we're not talking about that. remorse and have done the work right. and the community service behind it. Of course not. not exactly. Exactly. And there were just, a, there were a lot of cool points there. It was pretty funny to me, to be quite honest with you. Um, I think for me, the part about abortion um, is something that's really big for me. Um, you know, in the debate that I just participated in, some of y'all, I'm quite sure a lot of y'all saw the importance of including non-binary people as well as trans men in the conversation around reproductive rights. 
because that's a very nuanced conversation. Yeah. And just because you include non-binary people and trans masculine people or anyone who is able to give birth in a conversation, it doesn't mean we're erasing cis women no, out of that conversation. We're just adding it just, more people to the conversation. I never yes. understood. We're not taking anything away. We're just adding more conversation, more words, yeah. more description. Pulling more seats to the table so yeah. we can have the discussion. But of course, in mainstream politics, cis women are going to always be named first. And yeah. I just want to encourage liberals especially to just be more inclusive because there are more groups of people that this affects. Yeah. And I just think that Donald Trump was just saying that, you know, they're supporting abortion in the ninth month, which is ridiculous. I think that is so or after, harmful. Like, because he's able to radicalize his base exactly, behind that. Exactly. Uh, uh, behind false allegations yes. of how abortion when what's really happening is like what happened in Texas where the woman she needed health care she needed to get that removed properly mm -hmm. because she did take uh the the medication I believe it was plan B and mm -hmm. it didn't go out didn't turn out right yeah she basically she had, had a complication parts, her, yeah. parts were still in her and because she didn't have access to health care, she went septic and died, yes. which is a procedure that could have been an hour, maybe mm -hmm. two hours. The doctors go in and clean up her situation mm -hmm. so that she could actually function, live. And now she's no longer with us yeah. just because of these draconian Trump laws yes. that were placed in by our Supreme Court. It is these laws that are yeah. being put in place that is harming a lot of these women. It's like yeah. you have to go hundreds and hundreds of miles away to go to a place where doctors won't be arrested for giving that kind of care. You know what I mean? And women's lives are at stake. And I love that that's been Kamala's talking for him because there was a town hall she did with Oprah Winfrey. And I think the family of that girl actually was there. And that was the first time I heard that story. Yeah. And I also heard a story. I can't think of her name. Cute white woman. Um, talked about being a survivor. I think she's a survivor of... Of R.A.P.E., I think it was her father. The father, and she was 12 and pregnant. Yes. And had to carry, oh. Her story was so, wow. so powerful. I encourage y'all to go look at that town hall because yeah. it brought tears to my eyes and it just really got me thinking. Now, there's another part of this I want to talk about, and that's with the trans community because a lot of my trans siblings are not going to like what I have to say. Uh-oh. And, Shocked. you know, it's shocking. Uh-oh, let's Where turn the mic up. <laughs> let's make sure you give them a good clip viral so they can find it. Y'all, we have not... Okay. That's our button. There it is. <laughs> it's three at the top, all right? Three at the top. We got you. All right, all right. So here's the thing. When it comes to trans people, it's a very nuanced conversation because... Our rights are on the line regardless. And it is important for we as trans and non-binary folks to show up at the polls. Yeah. Now, I understand Kamala has a painful history with the trans community, oh, especially here God. in California. I'm not, not yeah. going to dismiss that at all. She I even kind of avoided a conversation just a few days ago when she was asked. So she was very indirect when they asked. Was it the interview with the woman? Yeah. She, I, see, I disagree with that. I'm the one. I, I disagree with that because... The thing is, number one, Kamala does not live the trans experience, number one. I think she's trying to play it smart politically. And I agree. I get it. Yeah. I get it. But it hurt to see it that way. Yeah. You know, to see it framed that way, to pull back support, it yeah. felt like a little bit. But she also didn't actually pull back support. It's almost like she used her law degree to speak in law speak. You yeah. Know? Like she wasn't speaking in the common man in that moment. And